So looking at the README, we can see that there is a restatement of the learning objectives. Um, there is our information architecture showing us the files we're going to be working on and that they're all connected and that will be through NAV. And then we have an HTML section and we have quite a bit to do there. So we have 15 items there. And then we have a CSS section and under that we have a lot of text is, a lot of this is provided. That'll make it a lot easier. Um, but we have a lot of items there. We have 19 items. And then at the bottom are just wireframes. So that's what we're going to work on. And to get started, let's just get in and look at this first thing. Now, one thing about to-dos, so what are to-dos? They are just comments that have the word to-do in them. So this is a common code uh, technique for setting up work for yourself or for somebody else and it happens in all languages so this is what they look like in html is we just create an html comment with the word to do in it and then if we really want to see you know once we create once we finish the to do we remove that and if you want to get an idea of how many to do's we can do command shift f or control shift f in windows and we can search for to do and so then we can kind of see how many we have here and we expect when we're done that we won't find any. So you don't want to turn in work with to-dos. You don't want to ever publish to production, you know, to-dos. So they're, they're there as, as kind of a project organizer, project management <coughs> help with that. So let's start out and see what we're going to do for, for the, so we're looking for to-dos in HTML. And the first thing we want to do is to give each of these pages a title and they're going to be a little bit different so they'll all start with golden ratio but we'll have a colon Fibonacci median about so let's go take a look at that if we go into index first and you can see there's a to do for title so we'll just put in a title tag so you notice I'm erasing my uh, I'm erasing my to do as I do that and then in the about I'm going to do the same thing, title, and this did not go away, title, and it's going to be golden ratio about, and to make this easier, I'm just going to grab this whole chunk, and I'm going to then go to Fibonacci, and replace that to Fibonacci. Fibonacci. And then I will go to media. So we're going to put the media. All right. So we've got all of the titles in there, and um, we still don't have any navigation, so we aren't going to be able to see that, but that would give us our tabs titles. The next thing we want to do is add meta tags to provide responsive support. So remember we looked at the meta tag viewport and then the special tag for IE. And we're just going to go through and put those in. So we now can say we can erase all of those um, meta tags need to go in there. And you can see there's quite a bit of code in there for you, um, mainly to prevent having to type in a bunch of content. Um, so that gives us our, it looked like that already had it, so we'll take that out. So some of these may have been done. Yes, it looks like those, if you do find, if there's any more, it'll, it'll highlight them so you can quickly see. So we've got all of our um, meta tags in there and we'll do one more thing here let's take a look at adding a favicon so with the favicon we've got this fee 140 and so you'll hear this fee this is the golden ratio it's got a Greek letter that can be pronounced fee in Greek or phi in American a lot of people call it phi and um, so if you like want to see that, this is just this letter here, this fee, and that's going to end up 
in all of our pages. So we're going to do this favicon and we just add that to all pages. Same favicon for all pages, kind of pulls our site together. And that takes care of that. So we should see something here. Let's see. There's so there's our fee and our golden ratio about if I go to index fee just golden ratio. So we we're getting our getting this set up so that it can uh, work for us as a responsive web page. And then um, we're gonna next thing we're gonna do we're gonna take a look at adding items to the icon bar. So this will be our social links. So to add to that social links, we're going to grab this set of list items and we're going to go find this icon bar. So I'm going to make that easy by just searching for icon bar. So I was looking for ways to make this more efficient. Um, and we can see here's one. So here's the to do to add the list items. And we'll see ultimately this will be a, a fixed position bar that will always be available. Now you don't have to fill these out, like if you don't have Facebook or Twitter, you don't care to, but it would be helpful to add your um, whatever your account on is on uh, GitHub because I can certainly use that to go look at your code quickly. So that might be helpful. Um, so I'm going to grab these and we've got the about. Fibonacci, just add those to that, the index, so it, you know, I, I'm assuming that you know what these are doing because they're, they're things that we worked on in the skills, but you know, we're just setting up some anchor tags with some font awesome icons and they, we've already added the font awesome and some icon classes here. Um, so we're ready to, to work with some different fonts and we're ready to work with Font Awesome. And so this will just give us a Facebook, Twitter, and GitHub icon. Uh, and then media. And we're just going to fill that in. So let's see if we see any changes here. Yes, we've got our, our little icons and their list items and they're available. Now they'll be available on all pages. So if we can cycle through, it'll be a lot nicer once we get our header going. It looks like there's an extra greater than there. Let's go find that before it becomes a problem. So that's on the about HTML. And where is it? So this can happen really easily. And we just want to try to find that in our elements. Seems to be right inside the body of the about. So I'm not having any trouble spot, I'm not, I am having trouble spotting it here because if I look at this I can see there is an extra greater than sign but when I go into the about page, let's just close that out, when I go into the about page uh, and I look at it I don't automatically see it. However, if I look at my GitHub diff here, so if you click on this scissors looking page in the about, um, I can look through here and by golly I can see that, that this has changed. So this shows me what, it, this side shows me what I started with and where I'm at right now. And I can see right over here that I've got an extra, an extra greater than. I don't. So that cleared that up. So sometimes you have to kind of look around, but it's good to not let those little typos get away from you. So let's look at the media page, and it looks like there's a problem on there too. Let's go take a look at media. So media. And let's just. Close this up. Close that down. Media page. Um, looks like we got this, but for some reason we don't have our list items. Of 
Right, so I can see that this is rendered, but I'm not seeing my icons. So let me just check again. And sure enough, in the media page, I don't have the links supplied. So whoever put this together didn't include all of every the same thing in every page. So we want to grab, all, might as well grab all of our Font Awesome and our Font Families and just get those onto this page and we'll put them above the style sheet and format and see if that so there now we can see them there and then just to double check uh, let's see we have our about our media our Fibonacci and those are there so that's looking good so at this point we are up through our icon bar up to number five. Let's not wait to check in. Everything we're doing looks like we're doing okay, but if we should make a big mistake, it's nice if we can have this much work checked in. So we'll get add, get commit. Get push. And so the you know the rule of thumb is check in often, check in early. So you're not going to want to wait till you do the whole thing to check it in because what if you lose it in between now and then, or what if you need to roll back to a point when everything looked good? This is this is the best practice is just get it checked in. So I think we're good on that. All right, now we're adding the hamburger and the brand to the headers. So we're going to take that hamburger, remember this is this UTF character, and uh, we're going to grab the golden ratio header. That'll take us always home to this index HTML. And we're going to add this to every one of our head. So here's where we add the hamburger and header. And in about, you can see these. there's a structure to these pages, and it's almost a template that we're following. It makes it easy for the user, and it also helps the developer to work with sort of a templated approach. So now we've got our golden ratio, and we've got our hamburger, and we can kind of check it out on every page. And there it is, and here we are. It'll be nice when we get our when we get our nav bar run it working, um, and that's the next step. So in on step six, we're going to take these links for nav bar and notice that we have a class equals active, and that's on the home page. So we'll want that set active for each page. Um, depending on what page you're on, you'll want to set class active to match the link of the page you're on. So we'll just grab these, this navigation and we'll start with index and you can see that here's our nav uh, section and we're going to just replace this to do with our nav list items. And for index, we want class equals active. We can actually remove this. Um, for the rest of them, we don't. So we'll, we'll take a quick look at that. And there's our nav items. And then we'll go to Fibonacci and place that in there. But now we'll grab this active and put it with Fibonacci. Okay. And that won't have any effect right now because um, basically you don't have any styling going on for that, but you can see we've got the nav in there. And then we'll go to media. And we'll do, oops, can't use that. Can't use my copy paste because I took that out. And let's format that. So formatting as you go is a good idea too. So we'll take this our nav in now our class active is going to move down to match media so uh, that's going to go inside there and then you can grab this you can format that 
and we'll go to about and replace that to do format it and move our class active down into about. Okay, so if we look at about that should be about now. So we did there. Alright, so now what do we want to do? Look back at our instructions. We finish number six. Um, our next step seven is to get some content into the footers. So once again, and you can see it's a lot of work maintaining it's even four pages here. And if you stick with web development, you'll find there are many, many ways to decrease this amount of work through using coding and things like that. So, we're, but for this, we're just going to remove that to do and get our nav information in there. And I probably should have updated the name because now I have to go do that again. But let's just say um, Dr. Peltz. Dr. Peltz. So you want to put your own name as the author. Does it really matter if there's a bunch of spaces there? Not really. It doesn't look good, but you know HTML ignores those kinds of spaces, so it's not going to affect layout or anything like that. But nice to keep it nice and tidy. So now if we look, we should see, yes, this should be on all of our pages, this, um, this uh, footer. So good. And that says 2018. Let's make it Let's just go to 2020. What the heck? And once again, it would have been better if I had just done this once and just caught then I could just copy and paste them all. But sometimes it doesn't work out that way. All right, so that's looking good, and we're down to we're ready to start in on number eight. Before we do any more work, though, let's do some get. So get add. Well, let's just see what we've got. Get adds get add dot get commit um, through seven get push and we might also so that gets us all up to date in github and then we might just double check our to do's and see how we're doing so we've we've really taken care of quite a few to do's so that's good and we're ready to do this number all right, so number eight, we're going to wrap header through footer in a div tag on each page. And we're going to use container, a container class on that for index and Fibonacci and single call container on media and about. So this is good where we're going to be able to apply a grid system to these pages. And they're a little different because one of them has kind of our, our holy grail and the other one has just a single call, single column. So let's take a look at that. So first of all, index, let's get index and Fibonacci right next to each other. So index and Fibonacci. So index, we basically are told to wrap from header through footer. Okay, we have header. So right now these are all just, I'm just folding these up to get a good look at them. Also makes it easier so to add on to it. So I could have used that wrap, but I'm just going to do that. And then this will be class equals container. So I'm just going to say that these are all in a container. And if I format the document, it you can see that now all of these are contained. And that will make it possible for me to do some layout with them. Um, Fibonacci, I'm going to do the same thing. So you can see we don't care about that, but header nav, section, side, footer. Uh, if I wanted to wrap these, I could grab all of that. Command shift P wrap div. Did that work for me? Let's see. Not quite because I, I didn't put it kind of 
got it in the middle of the footer, it looks like. So let's undo that. Command-Z will undo that. And um, I really don't want to mess this up, so I'm going to go over and look and see what I did change here. So um, only thing that's changed, really, there is still that div. So I kind of did goof that up. Do I have a div down here? And I put this div in the wrong place. So let's do one more Control-Z on that. So this is just an example of how to back out of something once you... So now, yes, so now Fibonacci has nothing. So yeah, sometimes if you, if you, if you use that wrap over a lot of things, it can lead to some problems. But for right now, let's just keep it simple. We'll create a div. And you can see in Visual Studio Code gives you the closing tag. We'll X that, Command X that, Command V that. And then we'll format it. I like to always format after a change because it, it reassures me that I did what I expected. So I just created a container. And so Fibonacci is going to use that, that container layout. And then if we go to about, and here I have a header, a nav, a section, a footer. And I'll just say div. And we'll wrap it around the footer. And the class equals single call container. Let me just double check that. going to be called single-call-container. So that looks good. And formatting that looks good. We'll do the same thing on the footer, or sorry, on the media page. So we have the header, the nav, section, footer. Nice to be able to roll these up. Makes it a lot more manageable. Div class equals single call container and we will move that Oop. down to the bottom, format it, and there we go. We have a full container containing header, nav, section, and footer. So I think we've got that one covered, number eight. Let's let's check that in. We won't see any difference because we haven't given the container any style yet. But control tick to open the terminal, get status, get add, get commit, and um, add a container. Push. I could be a little more specific and say, you know, that I did the HTML for containers because I haven't really done the full work on that yet. Okay. Notice down below here that it also gives you the first row. So it gives you the table header and it's got F with a subscript I, so FI and then FI divided by FI minus 1. So it's giving you some of what you see in the picture. If we go back and look at the comps on this, we're looking at the Fibonacci full that we're seeing that we have a caption with phi, and then we on our first row we don't have anything in this first column. We have fi, and then we have phi equals fi divided by fi minus one. And this is just the numerical um, spell out of the Fibonacci sequence, which is that e each um, value is is the you, you get the phi value by dividing the current number in the sequence divided by the previous number. So the sequence is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. And the sequence you get by just adding the previous two numbers. So in this 2 is a result of 1 plus 1, and 3 is 2 plus 1, and 5 is 3 plus 2. So that's how you get fi. And then phi you calculate by dividing the value of the current number by the value of the previous number. So 2 over 1 is 2, 3 over 2 is 1.5. And it, as you work this out, you'll see it converges on a number that is phi. 
So that's kind of the relationship between this, this magic ratio, 1.625, um, and the numbers that this mathematician Fibonacci figured out. And he's actually got a pretty interesting life. He, he was a trader. You know, he traded around the Mediterranean, and he learned about Arabic numbers. So it's, you can look into that. But here it's kind of showing you the sequence of fees, Fibonacci numbers, and then how that relates to the sequence of fee. And I filled this out, and you can have a look here. Is a, I inserted this table, so and I filled out the column. So I, I just grabbed that first row here in the caption. And now I have rows where I have scope row 0, 1, and NA, and that just matches up with what I was given in the instructions. And then I've got scope row 1, 1, 1, row 2, 2, 2, row 3, 3, 1, point, 3 and 1.5, row 4, 5 and 1.7, row 5, 8 and 1.6, row 6, 13 and 1.625. So you can see that it's converging on that golden ratio number, which is 1 to, to 1.625. So that is what was desired there, and we should actually be able to see this, although it's not styled yet. Let's just open that up in the with live server. So yeah, here are our, these were already given to us, and then we added this um, Fibonacci sequence and the F I phi equals. Fi over Fi minus 1. And then here are the numbers in this table. So we're starting to get through that part of our, our work on HTML. We've got our, our table made. It's numeric data, so it fits well with using a table. And at this point, we are ready to add some pictures of Fibonacci and his book. And to do that, we can just grab these two figures, and these go on Fibonacci HTML. So we should see we should see that we can add this. And in order to see exactly where these need to go, because we don't have a to-do on this, we're going to have to look at the picture again. So pulling up the comp on Fibonacci, oh, okay, we have just in our aside, the full aside seems to be taken up with that. So if we can locate the aside here, let's see, section, aside, oh, there's the to-do, it was hidden. Okay, so we just paste those in. And now if we look at this, we can see there's the picture and there's the book that he wrote that described these this mathematics that he had discovered. And it's a pretty interesting story, so if you're, you're interested in that kind of thing, there's a lot of information out on the web about it. So that gets us all set up to move on to the next item. So we're ready to move on to 13, which is on the media page. We're going to wrap the audio in a div with the audio container. So first of all, let's open up media. We'll find the audio. So here we are. We've got it to do there. And we're just going to try to wrap this with a div. Let's see if that worked. The format usually helps me see. OK, good. And then the class equals audio container. So we'll remove that to do. And I think we have a couple of frames containing video that we're going to wrap with divs, each frame wrapped with a div, and we're going to give it the frame container. So that's also on the media page. And they each have a to do. So we'll just command shift P wrap div class equals frame container format. So good. We're just putting a frame container around each of these. That will help us with styling this. Um, 
So we're going to do a command shift P that div and format and class equals. Things can get kind of conf you know cluttered with these divs, but we're just going to go for this from, for now and we'll see some styling. It helps us with styling these these frames, which can be challenging. And we'll just get rid of those. So these are not semantic, they're just all about styling. And that leaves us with just one more thing, which is on the about page, we're going to add a little comic. So we have a container, this XKCD comic, and we have an anchor tag, which will open up a comic page. Um, and it will also display this flowcharts um, comic. So we'll go to the about page and let's see, we're going to add this comic here. So formatting. And that actually should change what, how this looks. So yeah, we've added this comic. So so it's all about setting up flow charts for your code. And, and they, they sure are helpful, aren't they? They really help you to see what's going on. But I think one of the things in here that relates to this is that we like when people find the golden spiral in random images. And if you click on this, you can see that, yeah, you might be able to find the golden spiral in everywhere, but maybe not. Maybe, maybe it's not really everywhere. Anyway, um, you can look into that. We have, I think, one more thing, because I see this to-do list on our ordered list. So, yes, um, we're going to apply the learning objectives class to that ordered list. So, back to the About page, we're going to wrap this ordered list in a div. And then we're going to give it a class equals learning objectives format document. Okay. So now we have a, a container for this list. And that wraps up what we're going to be doing for content in HTML. And so the next step will be to look at a video on applying CSS. Because if we look at what we've got right now, we've got our content and we're able to navigate. We have a navigation, um, but we still don't have the look that we're looking for. And while you might have been able to deliver this content like this, you know, in the year 2000, maybe 1999, in this day and age, we want to have this styled and ready for easy viewing. So we'll be getting into the CSS for that. Before we leave, though, we will check in our, our, our most recent changes. So get add. So we'll just say finish HTML, get push. All right, so we're good.